you ever been involved in a major IT project that, despite all of your hard work and delivering a system that meets all functional specs, didn't live up to expectations and was possibly even considered a failure? Or are you currently involved in implementing a software and you need to make sure it delivers clear, measurable value and that it's considered a raging success across your organization? If so, this video is for you. In this short video, we're going to take a quick look at the reasons why so many projects fail and what you need to do differently instead to ensure that yours is a success. Let's start by looking at what happens on a typical software project. When a project first starts, someone identifies that there's a business problem that they need to solve. They believe that by implementing a new system, that at some point in the future, the organization will be much better off. The hope is that the software will do things such as increase revenues, decrease costs, save time and resources, improve quality, increase customer satisfaction, or really any other measure of success. Organizations make large investments in software based on the hope that the future return they get will justify all the costs and effort associated with getting the system live and up and running. And in a perfect world, we'd move in a straight line from where we are today to realizing these great benefits we expect in the future. But it's not a perfect world, and the reality is very different. Instead, implementing new software requires a large upfront investment. A lot of time, money, resources, and effort is spent gathering requirements and evaluating system options and meeting with vendors, mapping out business processes and configuring the system, cleaning and loading data, and testing the application. And the whole time you're doing this work, all you're doing is increasing your investment without actually realizing any business benefits. And by the time you go live, all you've done is maximize your sunk costs. And on most projects, what is typically done to get people to adopt the system is simply a small traditional change management effort, which usually only consists of a little bit of end user training and a few communications that try to sell people on what's in it for me. And amazingly enough, this is where most projects stop. Many software projects are declared a success if they're delivered on time and on budget, but long before they've delivered a single ounce of value to the organization. Does this sound like your project? When you look at this chart, the problem is obvious. A huge gap exists between when the project stops and when success is realized. Your system is not a success until it actually delivers the business benefits and outcomes you set out to achieve. So what is the approach that most organizations take to try to climb out of the success gap? Hope. If the project stops at go live, many organizations just hope that people will use the system and that they will achieve the results they want. And we all know that hope is not a strategy. Let's take a quick look at what happens next, and then we'll focus on what you need to do instead to achieve success. Once the system is live, organizations will slowly get some people to use the system. Typically, it starts with a few individuals, the early adopters, who are personally interested in the system and want to see what it can do. When this happens, the organization starts to get some value and then slowly start to recover some of its costs, but there's still a huge success gap. And over time, more and more people may start to use the system, and typically they only use a portion of the functionality, and they're often not using it as designed and intended, and this creates tremendous value leaks as they go. Eventually, the organization may get enough people to use the system that it finally gets enough value where it breaks even on its software investment. And this usually takes a lot longer than anticipated, and it happens farther to the right on the timeline than expected. If your organization can get enough people to use the system as part of their daily jobs, and if they can get them to use it as designed and intended, then it may eventually continue to the point where it realizes its business goals and achieves success. And while this is a great accomplishment, the reality is that on most projects this happens much later than expected, and the level of business value received is usually much lower than forecasted when the project began. Just looking over the simple diagram, you can see the problems very clearly. Most organizations focus too much effort on simply getting the system live and not enough on making sure they accelerate effective user adoption and ensuring that the system actually achieves business goals. What makes things harder is very few software project teams know what it takes to drive user adoption and benefits realization within their own organization. They don't have the right skills and experience and tools and approaches to achieve success. So ask yourself, is your project team set up to deliver success after go live? Do you know what you need to do and how to do it? If you had to put together a project plan and resource list for how you will drive adoption and achieve success one to two years in the future, could you easily do it? And how do you know your plan will work? There's one more key concept you need to know before we talk about how you can change your approach to ensure success. You need to take a look at what success looks like and break it down to key parts. So what exactly is success? When a business case is developed to justify the investment in software, 
The goal is set for improving the performance of the organization as a whole. There is an expectation that the software will be deployed and used in such a way that the entire business will benefit. And when you cascade this down, what we're really saying is that we want all divisions in the organization to improve their performance. And then we say, we really want all departments to improve their performance using the software. And continuing downward, we're saying that we want all teams to improve their performance. Ultimately, what we're saying is that there's an expectation that all individual users will improve their performance and be more effective and do their jobs by using the software. And this is where many disconnects and problems begin. What organizations really want to do is improve individual, team, and department performance. They want to change how people do their work and how they do their jobs to achieve more. And in many cases, they're actually changing people's jobs quite significantly. And yet while organizations may want to improve how people perform their jobs, what they actually focus the vast majority of their efforts on is getting the system live. It's critical to realize that success only happens if you get a large number of individuals, teams, and departments to use the system as designed and as intended. Success only happens if you get people to change how they do their jobs on a daily basis to use the system. And success only happens if you focus your efforts on driving these behavioral changes across the entire organization. Ultimately, software success only happens if you change how people behave and work together. These are people and organizational issues, not technical issues. The skills, activities, and methods you use to drive behavior change, user adoption, and ultimately success are very different from those that you use to get a system live. Achieving initial success is only a small portion of the problem. What happens if you look far into the future? What does success look like three, five, and 10 years out? You know, software is not used in a vacuum and the world in which your organization operates is constantly changing. Over a 10-year period, there will be changes to staff as new people come into the organization and old people leave. There will be new internal processes and policies and services and products launched within your own organization. And there'll be software updates and new releases, as well as other new systems coming into your organization. And externally, there'll be new laws, regulations, business cycles, and challenges from competitors that will require you to constantly change how you operate internally. When operating in a world of constant change such as this, you cannot treat change as a one-time event to be managed to go live. All of this complexity means that even if you achieve success up front, without constant effort to ensure ongoing system use, you may quickly find that you are no longer getting the benefits you need to justify the ongoing system costs. Without constant attention, the value you get from your software in the future can quickly plummet and your system can quickly go from a success that is delivering great benefits to a failure that is wasting resources. Don't let this happen to you. So what do you need to do instead? How do you make sure that once you achieve initial success, that you sustain it year over year into the future? And the answer is that from the very beginning, you need to shift your focus from getting the system live on time and on budget to achieving successful business outcomes over the long term. And you also can't rely on hope as your strategy for achieving success. Organizations that are buying software need to instead develop an ongoing internal software success program to achieve long-term success and sustain business outcomes. You need to stop doing a little traditional change management at GoLive, and instead you need to take actions at every step of the way to drive desired user behavior and accelerate and maximize effective user adoption. And you need to have the right resources and skills doing the right things at the right time to make this happen. And it's important to realize that this is not new work that you're suddenly be asked to do. This is work that always needed to be done to achieve success. It is only now, after so many years of software failures, that we are realizing that this work is necessary and that it was historically missing for most IT projects. We didn't know we needed to do it, but now we know. Your challenge is that you need to identify, prioritize, and deliver the actions that will drive adoption and achieve your goals. So ask yourself, who will do this work and have they done it before? Do they have the knowledge, experience, and expertise to make sure they're doing the right things that will accelerate success? And if not, Will we waste a lot of time, effort, and money doing things that won't work? And do we have the internal infrastructure and expertise we need to build and execute an effective software success program? Chances are your organization is not currently equipped to do this work successfully, effectively, and efficiently. And you'll probably need help, but where do you get it? One place you can turn for help is from your software vendor. Many software vendors are investing in customer success teams that are intended to help buyers of software drive adoption and achieve business goals with their systems. But beware, not all customer success teams are the same and they have very different levels of skill and ability and resources 
that they can provide to make your organization achieve success. If you're a software buyer, you need to closely evaluate the services and resources that potential vendors and CS teams provide to ensure that they're matching up to the activities that you need to take part as part of your internal software success program. You need to evaluate the level of expertise that the customer success team has in driving software adoption. You need to make sure that they're not simply promoting traditional change management, which we saw earlier is not effective. And you need to make sure that you do your due diligence to understand the vendor's customer success capabilities as part of your software buying decision. And if you're part of a software vendor's customer success team, here's an important message just for you. It's very important that when you're building out your customer success services and capabilities, that you understand this diagram and the timeline by which your customers can first achieve success. And it's very important that you understand what they need to do to keep achieving success 10 years or more into the future. And it's very important that you understand the activities, tools, and methods your customers need to effectively drive success with your software in their organization. And then as a SaaS vendor, it's very important that you work backwards from there to identify the tools, methods, and resources that you need to provide as part of your customer success efforts. This means that you need to have expertise in software adoption and organizational change. It means you cannot simply be an expert on your product, but rather you need to become an expert in how your customers can accelerate adoption and effective use of your product in their organization. So now ask yourself the same questions that software buyers ask themselves. What skills and expertise do you need to identify and develop and deliver these adoption and success services? And do you have the right tools and methods? And how will you deliver these services in an effective, scalable, profitable way? The challenge of driving software success is not an easy one for software buyers and vendors alike. It's a problem that is unlike any that most organizations have attempted to solve before. It requires a shift in focus from narrowly looking at technology to instead looking at all the people, behavioral, and organizational issues that are typically overlooked on most IT projects. The good news is that with the right skills and expertise and approaches, you can solve the software adoption and success challenge. And Tritons can help. We have many years experience helping organizations of all sizes establish and deliver effective, scalable software success teams. We've also helped many software vendors increase their customer success capabilities and effectiveness. Tritons has a long track record of success, and we have many ways to help. Contact us to find out more.